Julia, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a video testing the most stupidly expensive makeup products in my collection and seeing if they're actually worth the crazy price tag. I love high-end and luxury makeup products. I love treating myself every now and then. I went through each category and picked out the most expensive in that category that I have in my collection. Here's the makeup look I created. It is Fit for Queen. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, let us commence with the testing of the makeup. I already primed my face and did my like skincare routine in the morning, so I'm actually wearing a Tatcha moisturizer because I figured the Tatcha primer would kind of play well with it, but we are gonna be using the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer today. I've heard a lot of really amazing things about this primer, so I really wanted to try it for myself. It comes with this coin thing, so you just kind of, I guess, scrape it along the top of the primer, and you're only supposed to use a very small amount, so I kind of just went in very, very minimally. Wish there was a place on the container to actually store the coin, because I feel like this is gonna get lost really easily, but this smells like pretty much every Tatcha skincare item I've ever tried, but I'm gonna just dab a little bit on my forehead where I really need a silk canvas, because we got some breakouts going on. You guys were so kind in my last Get Ready With Me, kind of um, reassuring me, I guess, on my skin. I think that insecurity um, and that self-consciousness comes across a lot on camera, which I don't want it to, because I want to be a good role model for you guys, and I want you guys to love the skin that you're in and be confident in yourself, but it's hard, It's you can't be a good role model if you don't feel that way about yourself. So I'm trying to get better about it, I'm trying to be a little bit more confident, so even though my skin is not great today, I still wanted to sit down and film this because I don't care. <laughs> so this primer is $52 and I'll be honest I probably wouldn't have bought it if it hadn't been so hyped up but I've he been hearing everyone talk about it notably Jay Kissa who I adore so I knew I had to try this one out I hate the fact that this is so good it feels delightful on my skin and my face looks so smooth in this mirror unfortunately I might be latched on to a $52 primer which is annoying but I really do enjoy this so so far I'm really liking this let's see how everything applies on top of it but we're starting off bougie, we're gonna end bougie. I don't wanna waste a single bit of product. So next up for foundation, I was actually planning on using the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I don't really like that foundation on top of more pore filling primers, so I figured it probably wouldn't play very well with the Tatcha primer, or at least not in the way that I would want it to. So I also do have another more expensive foundation in my collection that I don't normally use on camera because it's from Dior, and I do have some non-cruelty-free items in my collection. I just don't like to share those on screen. I do use them, and I do enjoy them, but I don't wanna, um, promote them on camera, but I am gonna use this one on my video today because it is the most expensive foundation I own. This is the Dior Forever Tint Haute Perfection Tenue Extreme Sublimateur de Peau, which is basically just foundation. But um, this is highly raved about by Jaclyn Hill and I really like this foundation a lot. It's one of my favorite like full coverage long wearing foundations. So I do wanna use this on camera, but I actually wanted to use it with something I've never used before on camera. And that is gonna be my Clarisonic foundation brush. It's so bourgeoisie to have like an electric device that blends out your foundation for you. But I've been testing this out lately um, because I had the foundation brush head for a while. I just didn't have a working brush body to to use so I've been testing this out I will give you guys a full review in my um, my next episode of new makeup releases favorites and fails but until then I've been testing it out so we're gonna use it today with the Dior foundation I'm gonna do mm, let's do like one and a half pumps I normally use like one to one and a half pumps of foundation. I don't use a ton of foundation. I try to conserve everything. As I said, I've been testing out this Clarisonic foundation brush and um, I've been testing it with different foundation formulas. So far I've been noticing, I do not like how this performs with more like liquidy foundations. So the ColourPop No Filter Foundation, I love that foundation with a sponge. I think it applies best with a sponge um, as do most liquid foundations, but more creamy thick foundations like this one, I think are really good with a foundation brush. So I've been really liking the, um, the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation with that, the Becca Ultimate Coverage, just other thicker, more moussey foundations. I forgot to mention I am in the shade 15 in the Dior Forever. And a lot of you guys have been asking in the comments like what my foundation shade ranges are, just for reference. I always list down below in the question section in my description box in every single video um, what my foundation shades are. So if you are like the same shade as me, you can kind of get a good reference for different foundations I mentioned. So my um, foundation shades in Fenty, MAC, Tarte, etc. are down below. So. And everything seems to be diffusing really nicely on top of the Tatcha primer. Damn it, I don't want to spend $52 on a primer, but I really like this one. 
I am looking off this way because my mirror is right in front of me. So that's where my mirror is. That's why I'm looking this way. I really like this brush with this foundation. I will continue to test it out, but um, so far liking the base a lot. For concealer, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. This is in the shade 1N. I've been um, mentioning this concealer a lot. I really, really like it. I think it's probably one of my new favorite concealers or my favorite concealer in my collection, but I'm um, just gonna apply it under the eyes. And then I'm just gonna do um, on my forehead where I need a little bit of concealing. It is a bit lighter than my skin tone, so it is kind of a highlight shade, but that's okay because we are trying to brighten up the forehead a bit. Um, down the center of my nose. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but this is like the best my skin has looked in a while. So I'm gonna use a brush to blend out my concealer. This is just my AOA Studio High Def E101 brush. This is probably the cheapest thing I'm using in the video. It is a dollar, so this is really good. I'm actually gonna bring the concealer up over here in the kind of socket of where my eye and my nose meet. And this is gonna kind of cancel out any darkness. I find that I get kind of a little bit of a dark shadow in here. So I've been taking my concealer up here and that's been really solving the problem lately. Now I'm going to set everything with powder. So first we're gonna do the under eyes and um, I don't really bake heavy duty in terms of like how other YouTubers bake. I've seen some people do like insane amounts of powder and somehow their skin looks perfect. I just do not look good doing that. So I do what I like to call um, a soft bake where I just kind of use a very small amount. So I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. This is my favorite one. I don't use this to bake normally just because it is it's $38 and I don't wanna use a $38 powder as a baking powder because you do use a lot of powder when you bake. But I'm gonna also use the Givenchy sponge, the AOA Studio one that I love and recommend to you guys very often is a dollar. And this is, I don't even know how much. So um, just save your money on sponges, you guys. But I'm going to take the powder and just lightly pat a layer of it on top. So not so much where I'm going to have like a ton of loose powder, not necessarily patting it into the under eyes either. So we're just kind of setting powder on top of it. And then later after the powder bakes and kind of cooks our under eyes, we're going to press it into the skin for a more velvety soft look. Then for the rest of the face, we're going to use the Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade Fair. I've been talking about this quite a lot on my channel lately. This has just become, I think, my favorite pressed powder of all time. I'm not normally a huge fan of pressed powders. I only really like the hourglass ones, the ambient lighting, but this is a really beautiful matte finish. It just makes everything look so velvety smooth. And Desi Perkins was raving about it, so Desi Perkins has the most flawless face ever. So I regret to say that I really, really love this, and I will definitely be repurchasing it once it's gone. Damn it. Just dip into the powder and slightly dust it everywhere that we want to set our face. The base is looking stunning. Brown cow, stunning. Moving on to contour, I couldn't think of what I was going to use in this video. Um, so I posted a picture of the like video planning sheet that I was doing on my Instagram story. And someone actually responded because they saw that my contour area was um, empty. They were like, oh, you should do the Kevin Kwan contour powder. And I didn't even think about that. So thank you so much to whoever recommended that. But I do love this contour powder and I do want to use it on camera because I don't think I ever have. So this is the um, sculpting powder. I have the shade light, which is perfect for my skin tone. This is First of all, it's tiny. It's an extremely small amount of product. It is a cult favorite product and I do really like it. And I think it is kind of worth it because you don't have to use a ton of product to get a very nice sculpted cheekbone, but it's really crazy expensive. So I do want to use it on camera. So just gonna dip into there and then I have a stippling brush and I'm just going to kind of sculpt out my cheekbones, just lightly dusting this underneath. This creates a really nice natural shadow. So I'm gonna actually do my nose as well. Just gonna go back into the sculpting powder and use a very fluffy blending brush and just kind of sculpt the sides of my nose. Admittedly, I am not the best at nose contouring. It's not my strong suit. I wish I could learn to be as good at snatching my nose as like JD180 180 or James Charles or someone like that. But unfortunately, I'm just not that skilled yet. So I'm trying to get better at it. I am definitely practicing and I've gotten a lot better since couple months ago, but it's a work in progress. So that is everything all sculpted up. I think the cheekbones look really nice. And then to cut the sides of the nose a little better, I'm just gonna go in with some of the leftover translucent powder on my sponge and just kind of lightly bake these sides of the nose. 
This is probably one of the stars of the show. Here I have the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer, and I honestly, back when this first released, I think last summer, I didn't even like bronzers. So when Marc Jacobs announced that they would be re-releasing this one, I was very, very excited and I knew I had to pick it up. So here is the bronzer. I think it just came back in stock on Sephora, so you can actually get this one now. Compared to our tiny little Kevin Aquan contour. This is gigantic, you're getting a ton of product in here. Um, the drawback obviously is that it's 49 freaking dollars, so that's that's a lot. But um, it is a huge amount of bronzer and there's a really nice big mirror in here as well. So I will definitely be taking this traveling and it's very, very good for filming. So I'm just gonna take my bronzer brush and let's see how this goes. Oh wow, okay. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm just gonna warm up my forehead as well. It smells kind of like, um, what does this smell like? Ever had pizzelle before, which is like a um, North Italian slash Austrian slash German um, kind of Christmas cookie thing. It's a really thin waffle, I guess. That's what this smells like. So it doesn't smell like coconut to me, but it does smell like pizzelle, which is pleasant. This looks really nice. Um, I'm just gonna do the other side before I freak out. So we are looking very bronze. I like how this one looks. That is the base. I am so impressed. So that bronzer looks amazing. And dare I say, I actually do think it might be worth the $49 price tag, which is, which is crazy to me that a bronzer is $49, but you're getting so much product in there. It's very pigmented, so you have to use a very small amount. So you're not using a ton of product each time you go in there. Um, you're getting a really big mirror as well, and it's just really beautiful qualities. I'm gonna go into my Hourglass Ambient Lighting um, Pressed Powder Palette. I think this is the first ambient lighting edit, so from like three years ago, but they release a new holiday palette every single year with all their products in there, so. I'm going to go into a blush. I think we're gonna go for the shade Mood Light here. Um, or I just may mix the two blushes. So we have um, Mood Exposure, which is my favorite one, and then Luminous Flush, which is more pinky. So I'm just gonna mix both shades. And these are very soft blush. They're pigmented, but they blend very well and it's very hard to over apply them. So I really like how this shows up. And I think we don't need a ton of blush today just because the bronzer was very pigmented and showed up very strong on the skin. For highlighter, the most expensive highlighter that I have in my collection would be from Becca. Um, each of their single highlighters is $38, which is crazy. And I do have a single highlighter from them. It's in Prismatic Amethyst, which wouldn't really match this one. Instead, I'm just gonna go into my Becca Jaclyn Hill palette, which has um, Champagne Pop and Prosecco Pop. I'm gonna use Champagne Pop. I believe this is still available as a single. Um, but this is, I haven't used this one in a while just because I have so many other new highlighters in my collection that I've kind of been using over this one, but we're gonna see how this performs. Yeah, it's just a really pretty glow. I love Becca highlighters because they're not super um, like glittery. They have a good amount of pigmentation to them and they're very, very blinding and glowy, but they're not going to like emphasize texture on your cheekbones. They're just gonna look nice and dewy. So this is definitely a Jaclyn Hill-esque approved glow. I do like my Anastasia Amrezy highlighter better. Nothing can beat that, but that one's discontinued. Cupid's bow. Just kind of dusting it everywhere, actually. So the Becca highlighters are really, really pretty. Um, so far, I'm very impressed with all the face products. Now I'm gonna move on to eyes. So first I wanna do my eyebrows. I'm gonna use my Rodile Glamour Brow Pencil. I use this in the Get Ready With Me testing new products that I just did, um, the Red For Me Kai look. So I use this Glamour Brow Pencil, and I didn't even realize how crazy expensive this was. I said that it was probably my, like one of my new favorite brow pencils, but I probably will not repurchase this one just because it's like $28 and I don't need to be spending $28 on a brow pencil because you go through brow pencils very quickly and this one is as good as it is. I don't need to like repurchase a brow pencil when I could just use my pomades up because those are more economical. You use a lot less product each time you go in and they're actually tend to be cheaper. So, but um, I'll enjoy it while I have it. I'm not talking to you guys while I do this, but I just, I can't talk while I do my brows. It's just, it's too precise for me, so sorry. Okay, so I'm back. I just primed my eyes and now I actually want to do my powder steps. So I still have the powder under my eyes from baking and instead of brushing it away with a powder brush, what I've been doing lately is actually using that damp sponge and instead of brushing it away with a powder brush, which I find can kind of disturb the foundation underneath it, I actually like to take my damp sponge again and just kind of take the powder and press it into my skin. So the damp sponge will take up whatever excess powder we don't need on the skin 
and then it's gonna really brighten up the under eyes and just keep everything looking nice and velvety smooth without disturbing the foundation underneath. So I really, really like this and it doesn't leave flashback either. So moving on to eyeshadow, we're using none other than my Pat McGrath Mothership palette. I realized that in my months of having this, I haven't ever used it on camera for you guys. So I did want to do that today. I feel bad mentioning the price of this, but this is $125 um, and it's, it's very beautiful. These are absolutely dynamite in terms of the quality of these shadows and I love these so much so i'm gonna be doing a very nice green look for you guys today i'm gonna go into the shade here this is the brown shade the matte formula is one of my favorites it's very very pigmented and it blends so easily so i'm just going to kind of run that through my crease we're using the elf detailed crease brush this is very very good You know, to save time, I just did my other eye off camera, so this is gonna be the finished eye look, kind of. I have to add lashes and mascara on, obviously, but. So I left off on the brown, right? And now we're gonna go into the matte black shade here. I've mentioned that this is my favorite matte black shade, and I'm not even someone who even, like, loves matte blacks. I'm just putting this on the outer corner. I don't even like matte blacks that much. If I made my own eyeshadow palette, I probably wouldn't even put in a matte black. It'd probably just be, like, a dark brown. Um, I've tried many matte blacks, and this is by far the best matte black of all time. Just kind of doing the pack on motion first and then just let it diffuse through the outer corner, blending it a bit onto the lower lash line. And we're smoking it outwards. I'm gonna do the green first, going into with a flat shader brush. I always recommend using shimmer shades wet, but with the Pat McGrath metallic pigments, you gotta use them wet. So I've just sprayed my brush with a little bit of water, which is free, and we're gonna go in, we're gonna go right into this green shade here. As you can see, the water is kind of getting it wet and activating the pigment. So you're getting it onto your brush, and now, like, It's a green pigment, but it's got this kind of nice black duochrome shift with a black base. So it's gonna blend really seamlessly with the black shade that we already have in the outer corner. And that is why I love Pat McGrath. She really thinks her color theories through and patting it on to the center of the lid. Another thing that I love about this look is that it's literally only four colors. Um, I normally go in with like three different crease shades and four different lid shades and couple other things for the inner corner and the lower lash line. And with this palette, since I'm kind of more limited in terms of what I have, I have to kind of get inventive and use different shades creatively. So now going into a different flat shader brush because we don't want to mix shades, getting it nice and wet. We're gonna go into my favorite shade in my entire collection of eyeshadows, period, which is this gold pigment right here. Sir, so I'm gonna need you to stop. Bringing it onto my inner corner as well. Then we're kind of patting it where it meets with the green to kind of merge the two shades. I'm gonna go back in here and go into the matte brown shade, dust off excess, and just smoke out the lower lash line. The most expensive mascara I have in my collection is a sample of the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. I'm not gonna purchase this ever because I don't purchase from Lancome. Full, but this is a very um, fat brush. I don't even know why I have this, but it's a really thick brush. I've never tried this mascara before, so let's see how it performs. All right, so that's the mascara on. It's very voluminous, very thick. Obviously, there's no mascara out there that's going to make your lashes actually look like falsies, so if you're going for something that's going to like imitate falsies, I would say this is not the best option, but it's still really pretty. For lashes, I'm going to use my Cake Face Beauty Kim Thai Lionhearted Lashes. These are the most expensive lashes I have in my collection, which is not too expensive. They're $16. That's not like Lily Lashes slash Velour Lashes expensive, but it's still pretty pricey, so I'm going to use my House of Lashes Lash Glue. I use this every single day. All right, these are obviously very dramatic. I think they kind of match the eye look though, so 
and I like dramatic lashes a lot. And I guess we're just gonna finish off with lips now. So I have my Pat McGrath lipsticks. I'm not sure which one to use. We have the shade Omi, which is a very nice light pinky kind of nude shade, but a little bit more cool toned. Um, and then we have the shade Major Red. I'm gonna go with Omi, even though it is a bit pinky, we'll make it work. These are extremely creamy. They're very, very matte. So this is gonna dry down and it's gonna be pretty much budge proof for 16 hours or so. These are extremely long wearing and I really like wearing them. They are a bit drying because they are more of a matte formula and they're so long wearing. So I would kind of expect that. But in terms of quality, these are amazing. Are they worth $38? All right, so this is the completed look. Obviously it is very glam, but I'm gonna go put on an outfit and I will give you guys my final thoughts. Well, how do I look? This is how I'm gonna shoot my Instagram pictures with the crown, but um, I just got this off Amazon. It's really pretty. I will wear the earrings. So here's the final look. I'm just gonna go through the products and evaluate my final thoughts. So I guess I'll just start off with Face, the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I really like how everything applied on top of this. I think this is gonna be one of my new favorite primers. Um, I'm gonna have to continue to test it out, so I will give you guys a final review, probably in the new makeup releases, favorites and fails video that I'm gonna be filming sometime next week. but I really enjoy how everything applied on top of it. I haven't had such a good skin day in a while, and that's really saying something because I don't really have that many good skin days, but this is beautiful. I really enjoy this. Is it worth the price? Yeah, I'd say so. Dior Forever Foundation, I really enjoy this one. It wore beautifully. It's one of my favorite foundations in my collection. So this one looks beautiful and it applied very nicely on top of the Tatcha Primer. So I'm very impressed with this one. The Clarisonic Foundation Brush, so bougie, but it really does work very well. It's really good for saving time in the morning. The Laura Mercier Concealer is another one of my favorites. This is just very good quality. It blends very easily under the eyes and it's very full coverage as well. So I know it's not gonna crease on me. It just wears very well under my eyes. I've mentioned this very often. So this for me is worth the $28. Then in terms of powders, the Laura Mercier powder, I do still like to conserve it just because I am a little bit more cautious with more expensive products, but it's a really beautiful translucent powder. They do have two different shades of it, so if you have a deeper complexion, you can get a more um, tinted one. And just in general, it's very finely milled, very velvety, and it doesn't give flashbacks, so really like this one a lot. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. This looks so beautiful on the skin. It's very velvety smooth. I just love how this looks, and I, I hate saying that I've fallen in love with such an expensive powder, but I do think that I will be repurchasing it once it's gone and that it is a new staple in my collection. So, gosh darn it, Desi Perkins, why you gotta get me onto this thing? The Kevin Aquan Contour, really, really beautiful. I love how easily it's just sculpted out my face. Um, this is very, very effortless to use. You are getting such a small amount of product in here, so I would say I really wish they would knock this down at least $10 in price because it's, it's crazy expensive, but... Um, it is really good quality, and if you do want to invest in a really good contour product, this is a great way to go. The Marc Jacobs bronzer I am so impressed with. I love the packaging of it. It's just so sleek and beautiful. And then the bronzer color itself is really nice. It's not too warm, not cool toned either, so it's a really good kind of in the middle neutral bronzer. It'll work for me pretty much all year round, and it smells great, so really enjoy this one a lot. The Hourglass blushes I've continued to rave about very consistently on my channel. They're very smooth, it's very hard to over apply them. So if you get a little bit overzealous sometimes with powder products like I do, I think you'll probably really like these because you can't really apply too much. They blend out very easily. So I really do like the two colors in here. Mood Exposure is my favorite. So. The Becca highlighters. So I do like the color of Champagne Pop. Obviously it's very blinding and beautiful and these are raved about for a reason. The formula is really great. They are very smooth and they have a lot of dimethicone in them. So they're very um, soft to the touch and creamy. And that's one of the things I really like about their formula. Are there better formulas out there at the drugstore for a lot less money? Hell yeah. Becca does do a really great highlighter, but you can always get something better. And highlighters, there's so many amazing options at the drugstore. The Rodale Glamour Brow, probably not gonna repurchase this one. It is a beautiful brow pencil. It's very fine tipped, very easy to blend, and has just a gorgeous color to it. This is the shade Dark Ash Brown. I'm not gonna repurchase it though, just because there's so many brow pencils out there. I don't feel the need to spend $28 on a single brow pencil. You could get the ColourPop brow pencil for $5. There's just amazing options out there. You don't have to spend this much on a brow pencil. The Pat McGrath shadows are so impressive to me and I honestly think that this is a shadow that you can only see the quality of if you use it on screen. So I'm very glad that I was able to use it on camera for you guys today. The problem with these ones though is that they are activated by water. So if you do cry or if you have watery eyes, you would probably wash these away on your own face 
and they would not last long on you. So don't wear these to a wedding if you know you're gonna cry. I can't wear them to school because I cry there a lot. If there's more than two shades in this palette that you know you're not gonna use, skip this palette. If you're gonna only use 80% of the shades, I would say go for something a little bit less expensive. If you like the color scheme of this one, you can get the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism palette. It's very similar in color scheme with the greens and the golds and the blacks and the browns. So really enjoy this a lot. Um, it is very expensive, but in my opinion, it's one of the most special formulas out there. The mascara is fine, not gonna repurchase it. Again, I just think there's so many better mascaras out there at the drugstore. The Essence Lash Princess is one of them, and you don't have to spend a ton of money on high-end mascara. It's just not that important to me. These lashes are one of my favorite pairs. They're very fluffy and long. The band is a little bit thick, but I don't really mind that just because they're very durable. I've used these 25 times plus, and they're still going strong. So these are really great quality. I really like the box as well. I think Kim Tai did an amazing job. And overall, it's Cake Face Beauty is an amazing brand, and I love supporting indie brands like this one. And then my beloved Pat McGrath lipstick. This is beautiful. It performs very well. It's super creamy, and in my opinion, it's one of the best lipstick formulas in the world. So in conclusion, what I've learned from this video is that you don't need to spend a ton of money to get amazing quality products. If you want to see some of my favorite drugstore products, I just posted my ultimate all-time favorite drugstore holy grail makeup products. I will link that in the cards above. That'll kind of be a good refresher after watching this crazy expensive video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please let me know in the comments down below what is your bougie favorite. I'd really love to try it out. And make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this one posted every single day. And if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Bye.